Hello everyone, I'm Modi here from Retarget Com YouTube channel and this will be another video in OAuth 2.0 authorization flow. In the last video, I have already explained what is OAuth 2.0 and how it works. If you see this diagram again, here at the step A, where client is requesting for authorization to resource owner and once resource owner authorize them, right? You remember when I clicked on Google, then Google account page was open where I entered my Google credentials and after that it was authorized, right? So actually it returns something called authorization grant, okay, to the client. But now the question is how client is redirecting resource owner to authorization server to authorize themselves so that client can get the authorization grant. So actually what happens? So here you need to understand that if any client like Dropbox or CSV photo, whatever we have seen in last video, if they want to provide some facilities like you can log in with your Google accounts or you can upload photos from Google photos. So this client mandatorily needs to register with the Google and when this client register with the Google then Google provides something called client ID and client secrets to this client. So whatever if suppose this client is allowing you to log in via GitHub then this client need to register to GitHub and then it needs to achieve the client ID and client secret. It's not the direct process that client will directly navigate the resource owner to authorization server. First client needs to they register with their Google or GitHub, whatever way they want to provide, maybe Facebook or Instagram, whatever they want to provide. Then this client needs to register with them and they need to get the separate client ID and client secret. It's not that client ID and client secret used for Google will be same for GitHub or Apple. So let me jump to the diagram here where I'm explaining what is client ID and client secret. So in step A, that if if client wants to perform a step A, then they need to have something called client ID and client secret. So client ID is a public identifier for the application or client. So you can see here, suppose this is your app. This might be Dropbox, CVS or it might be your personal app. If you want to provide that, anyone can able to register on your app via Gmail or I should say Google, Google account. Then your app needs to be registered with Google so that Google will provide the client ID and client secret. Similarly, if you want that on your app, anyone can log in via Apple, then you need to register with Apple. Then Apple will provide their own client ID and client secret. Let me show you how client ID are different. Let me go to browser and let me open Dropbox. If you go to dropbox.com and click on sign in, then you see two options here, continue with Apple and continue with Google, means Dropbox, which is an app or client is allowing you to sign in with two ways, sign in with Google and sign in with Apple. If you click on this, continue with Google, it will open a accounts.google.com page and just simply copy the URL and go to postman and click on new request and paste the URL here. If you come here, then you can see there are so many query params and uh, here we don't have the client id directly but if you go to continue let me copy this one and uh, paste it here in the new tab you can see we have something called client id so let me remove the unicode characters so simply for that what i'm going to do uh, let me copy this one and i'll go to browser again and i will search code unicode character online from string so I will simply paste the URL here and let me convert it. So once I convert it, I will see that all this percentage thing, right? Percentage two, six and all these are Unicode character. These will be removed and this will be replaced with the actual character. So let me copy this one, the decoded one and let me paste here. So if you see here, I should see my continue here, right? There's one param called continue. And if you go to this URL, you can see here we have client ID, which is this one. Okay, let me copy this client ID. So this client ID is from Google, right? Now, let me go to again, go to login page of Dropbox and now click on continue with Apple. Again, let's copy the URL and go to Postman, create a new request and simply paste it. I am doing this just to see my query params. You can see here we have client ID and this is the client ID value. And this is came from Apple. You can see that Dropbox has registered with Google and they have registered with Apple as well, but for both client ID is different. Okay, client ID cannot be same for two different applications. So once you register with the Google or Apple, so you get two things actually, client ID and client secret. And again, client secret is optional. It's not like that in all the conditions you'll get the client secret, but before that you need to understand what is client secret. So if 
client secret is a secret key known only to the application and the authorization server it's like password because you your password no, you only know right and when you enter the password in that application then it will be authorized so if you're creating any public app then client secret is optional and again you can understand your client id is nothing but the pass username and client secret is password now if you see the diagram again flow diagram then here we have one more thing called access token so once the client receives the authorization grant they use that authorization grant with authorization server to, to achieve the access token so what is actually access token and you can see that this access token can be used in further flow to access the protected resource so access tokens are credentials used to access protected resource correct because we are passing the access token then only i can access the protected resource and access token is a string representing an authorization issue to the client we understand from that flow now you need to understand these lines like token represents a specific scope we can define the scope that means this access token can be used for what what purpose it's not like you can do all the things or all the actions using that token there will be some limited scope like suppose if you go to office maybe you can have access on particular floor you may not have access on all the doors right similarly here with the access token you can define a scope and durations of the access access token can be expired it can be expired in 5 minutes also it can be expired in 60 minutes also that depends upon contract and again granted by the resource owner and enforced by the resource server and authorization server we have already seen this flow i said that access token can be expired so what happens when access token expired obviously you need to do this flow again you need to get the authorization grant again then from that authorization grant you can access the token sorry you can request the access token and then only you can access the protected resources but this is not feasible all the times that's why when first time they are returning or they are giving you the access token that time they give you something called defrace token as well so what is defrace token so defrace tokens are credentials used to obtain access token okay means if your access token expired then you can use the defrace token to generate a new access token there is no need to go and get the authorization code again or authorization grant again you can use the defrace token to generate a new access token refresh tokens are issued to the client by the authorization server and are used to obtain a new access token when the current access token becomes invalid or expired issuing a refresh token is optional at the discretion of the authorization server and is issued with the access token it is optional right if you want that some client needs to request for the authorization grant again once the access token expired then you can mark that okay i will not give any refresh token but if you are setting up that refresh token should be that refresh token will be given with the access token so let me explain the o2.0 to follow with the refresh token now so here i am starting with the authorization grant means your resource owner already provided the authorization grant so client will request authorization server with the authorization grant now okay and once authorization server verifies that authorization grant is valid then authorization server will return the access token and refresh token now once client has the access token then the client can request for protected resource from the resource server and they can do the same thing as long as the access token is valid once access token is expired then obviously when the resource server will check if the access token is active or not and when it is token is no more valid it is already expired then it will throw something called invalid token error in this case client needs to send the refresh token to authorization server now no access token or no authorization grant you can see that client is sending the refresh token to authorization server and this authorization server will check that refresh token is valid or not if the refresh token is valid then it will return you the access token or optional refresh token why optional because you can use the, this refresh token again and again to get a new access token so refresh token can be or cannot be expired that depends upon contract if it is expiring after generating a new access token then you need to use the new refresh token here so i have covered all the terminologies used in oa 2.0 and from next video i will show in real time how the authorization grant is generated how we retrieve the authorization code how we get the access token and then how can we access the protected resource if you have any doubt please comment on this video if you really like my videos please like comment subscribe and share with others thank you everyone